Hey YouTube family, my name is Olga. Welcome to the very first episode of Time for Tea. You're probably sitting there wondering what the heck is Time for Tea. It's the new series that I'm starting on my channel where I'll be answering your questions, updating you on what's happening in my life, and also just talking about things that I care about all while drinking tea. If you've been following me for a while, you might already know that I'm a huge tea drinker. I love teas. In each episode, I will be trying a new tea and sharing with you what I think about it. In this video, I don't have a specific topic that I want to talk about. I just wanted to introduce this series, but I received a bunch of questions from you that I'm going to answer and also I have some exciting news to share with you. So this is what we're doing today. But first, it is time for tea. I wanted this episode to be special, so I actually got myself one of those blooming teas. If you've never heard of them before, a blooming tea, also called a flowering tea, is a tea that is shaped into a bowl like this one. And when you brew it, it blossoms into a beautiful flower. I think the concept is really cool. And I've been meaning to try one of these for a very long time. So I think this is a perfect opportunity to do this. Let's go make it. All right, the tea is done. It's still super hot, so I'm not going to try it just yet, but it smells really good. I guess let's start with the updates. All right, let's get comfortable. This is gonna be a long video, so you also get comfortable. Let's see, what has been happening in my life? Ever since the beginning of 2016, I feel like I've been running around and just working on a million things and trying to fix a million things. Every year, the beginning of the year is very busy for me because there's a lot of admin, tax, and accounting things that I do. And I do all of those things myself and they're very time consuming. I don't particularly enjoy them very much, but you know, it's something that has to be done. Another big thing that I've been working on is the redesign of my website. Right now, I'm not exactly happy with the way it's set up. My goal is to bring the blog and the recipes to the forefront so when you get to the website that's the first thing that you see. I feel like some of you struggle sometimes finding certain recipes on my website so what I want to do is to categorize them nicely and to make the search option very simple. So I'm working on this right now. I don't know exactly when I will be launching the new website, hopefully end of May or beginning of June. Over the past couple of months I've also been working on a couple new projects. One of them I would still like to keep a secret because it's far from being done and I really don't like talking about things and if I don't have anything tangible to show you. But another one I think I can share with you. It is a cookbook. It will be an ebook because I want it to be accessible to everyone and it will be specifically on vegan desserts because you know how much I love desserts and I know that you love desserts as well. So I'm so excited. I've been working on it for probably half a year now, putting all the recipes together. I have all of the written part ready. I have all the recipes stepped up. Most of the recipes will be new and exclusive to the ebook. They haven't been featured on my channel or the blog. And I also try to include as much information as possible in the ebook on healthy vegan baking and dessert making in general because I truly believe that it's very helpful. So you will find tons of tips on what ingredients to use, what equipment to use, and just the foundations of vegan baking, how to make raw vegan desserts. All of the recipes in the ebook will be gluten free and free of refined sugar so I also included tips on how to do gluten-free baking and achieve perfect results every time and also what substitutes to use instead of sugar. Anyways, I cannot wait for you to check out all these recipes. The next big part for the ebook is to take uh, the photos for all of the recipes. I personally detest when a cookbook does not have a lot of pictures because I think pictures are what inspires us to cook and to bake so I'm going to make sure that every recipe comes with a nice picture but I will update you when I'm close to being done. I might even do some previews on my channel for a couple of recipes from the ebook. Who knows? Maybe. We'll see. A lot of people are wondering how come fabletch containers cost this much and the reality is they're just really expensive to manufacture and to ship to customers. Also, I guess a lot of people don't realize that they're not plastic. There's zero plastic used when creating a fabletch container. They're made entirely out of food grade silicone and naturally it's just a much more expensive material. So when you put together the cost of producing a product then importing it into the country, delivering it to the the warehouse, storing it and finally shipping it to the customer, the total cost 
per container is actually very high and I wish trust me I wish I could charge five dollars or at least ten dollars per container but that wouldn't cover even half of the cost that I'm paying which would mean that I will be losing money and I know we're so used to seeing really cheap lunch boxes on Amazon or at Walmart well most of the time those containers are plastic but the bigger issue is that the companies that sell them are huge corporations and when they place an order with a the manufacturer they usually order hundreds of thousands if not millions of units at once and that allows the manufacturer to give them a huge discount and as you can guess this does not apply to my little company and of course there is the cost associated with providing 10 free school lunches to children in need for each container that we sell I guess what I want you to know is that the profit per container that I make after all the costs are covered is quite small. It was never my intention to make millions with this product. It was just an opportunity to do something what I'm passionate about, which is to help those who are hungry. I feel extremely lucky every single day to have access to food and to be able to afford breakfast, lunch and dinner. And it breaks my heart knowing that there are people in the world, especially children who don't have the same luxury and before I get too emotional about this um, I guess this answers the question why the containers are priced the way they are and I'm sorry if you get annoyed when I mention the containers if you get annoyed when I mention the containers in the videos but that's the only way for me to spread the word around and of course I want to sell as many containers as possible because that means I can help as many children as possible so that's that like i mentioned in my previous video please don't ever feel like you have to buy the containers i completely understand if you don't speaking of my previous video i filmed another what i eat in a day video and a lot of you seem to enjoy it quite a lot which makes me really happy i decided that from now on i will probably start to do more casual vlog style what i eat in day videos because i got myself a vlogging camera Ta -da! if you're wondering it's a canon g7x which pretty much every single youtuber who does vlogging has on youtube i've been playing around with it and so far i really like it i don't know if i will be good at vlogging i might suck at first so bear with me but yeah i like the style of my previous what i eat in a day videos and i wouldn't say they're not realistic because this is exactly how i eat but they're definitely more planned i would think ahead of what i want to cook that day and how i want to film it and uh, i will always make sure that you know i'm cooking breakfast lunch and dinner because i want to show you the recipes for those dishes so with the vlogs i think the style will be more casual more relaxed i could do what i eat in a day video for one of my cheat days or for when i'm eating out so i think those videos will also be fun to make and fun for you uh, to watch and the best part is that they will be easier to make and easier to edit so I can make more of them Which is good another thing that I'm really excited about is my trip to Europe I'm actually going on a trip with my boyfriend next Thursday, but don't worry I've been working really hard and I've pre-filmed a bunch of videos so there will still be videos coming out while I'm on my trip We're going to three countries. We're going to France, Austria and Italy to be honest I'm a little bit nervous about this trip just because this will be the longest trip that I'm going on after I transition to a vegan diet We're going for 15 days in total and we're also going to three different locations It's not just one place, but I've been doing quite a lot of prep. I've researched a bunch of places we could go eat to i'm using the website called happy cow if you haven't checked it out please do it's so helpful so fingers crossed everything works out and i always find food for myself so now the question is should i vlog during my trip and if i should what kind of videos do you want me to make i was thinking of maybe doing a what i eat in a day videos travel edition for each one of the countries that i visit let me know what you think about this and if you do want to see those videos do you just want to see the food or do you also want to see what i get to do in the cities that i'm staying at anyways please leave a comment for me down below because i want to make the videos that you want to see so let me know if you want to see those vlogs and what they should include and the last update but a very exciting one uh if you live in toronto or the gta area you might get a chance to meet me very soon the dance studio where i go to 
for Zumba classes is going to have a free Zumba party. There will be one hour Zumba class and after that I will set up a table and I will show everyone some healthy post-workout recipes. I will bring even more food for all of us to share after it and I think it will be very fun. We don't have a set date yet. It will definitely be on a weekend, probably at the beginning of June. If you've never tried Zumba before, don't worry, please come, it's just so fun and our instructor Jessica is absolutely amazing. I guarantee that you will have an awesome time. Um, but yeah, once I know all the details, I will update you in another video and also on my social media. All right, let's try the tea because it's probably cold by now. I've been blabbing on for hours. Mm, I like it. It's really good, which is surprising because I'm not a big fan of green tea. If you want to know which tea I got exactly, I will have the link for it in the description. But I think this is an awesome tea to serve at a party if you have friends over. It's a cool experience to see the ball blossom <laughs> into a flower. If you have a recommendation for a tea that you think I should try, please leave it for me in the comment section down below and I might be trying it in my next time for tea video. And now it is time for the Q&A. I got tons of questions about my diet and about veganism so what i decided to do is to dedicate next time for two video entirely to my diet and to answering those questions and in this video i'm going to answer the other questions that i received there's still quite a lot to go through so let's get into it i have my laptop set up over there so that's where i will be looking so sarah asks where do you live do you have any siblings and what is your favorite piece of clothing i live in toronto canada i have a brother and a sister both of them are younger and my favorite piece of clothing is um, tights or leggings as you can see I'm wearing some right now I love tights I feel so comfortable in them the next question is from Leia or Leah sorry if I don't pronounce your name right where are you finding your recipes I find inspiration from for my recipes everywhere from Pinterest, from other food blogs that I follow, from Instagram. If I'm eating out at a restaurant and I fall in love with the dish, I always try to recreate it at home after. Sometimes I just open the fridge and I see what kind of food that we have there and what can I make with it. And of course, if there is a recipe that I like that is not vegan, I always try to veganize it and make it healthy. XX Cruise Love 26XX. I think. I love your accent. What is your ethnicity? I am Russian. It is a Russian accent. Ellen Marie asks, what do you like to do for exercise? As a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? So for exercising, I like to follow a workout program. Uh, right now I'm liking two. One is from Tracy Anderson and one is from Kayla. It's her bikini body guide. I'm sure a lot of you know about it. All of those programs come with the nutrition guide or eating plan and I never follow those. I don't think they're very good. They mostly focus on restricting calories and I don't believe in that so I only do the exercises. I also do Zumba twice a week. I go to yoga sometimes. I do yoga at home like a gentle yoga every single morning and in the summer I just just try to stay as active as possible. I go biking with my dad from time to time and I love walking and I love going for walks and in general you know I hate driving I'd rather walk somewhere so that's how I get my exercise and when I was a child at first I wanted to be a teacher I remember I would take all of my dolls all of my stuffed animals I would sit them on the couch pretend that they're my class and I would be the teacher I would be teaching them math and how to read and all that fun stuff after that, I wanted to be a lawyer for a while, but I decided that if I wanted to be a criminal lawyer, it could be very dangerous and I did not want to be killed. So I changed my mind. Trini asks, do you have any YouTubers you love and watch regularly? Yes, I do. And surprisingly, I don't watch a lot of cooking channels. I follow my friend Jenny from Jenny Mustard YouTube channel. I love her videos. They're so beautiful and so inspiring. I also follow Alex and Mimi Icon. They're actually the reason why I started my YouTube channel and my business. I also watch a couple of vlogs. I watch Superwoman and Casey Neistat. Again, I find them extremely inspirational and very hardworking. Oh, recently I developed this obsession with interior design i don't know why but there is this youtube channel called house and home i believe 
I should know because I watch it every week. But anyway, so they have videos for interior design and they give a lot of tips on how you can make your place look beautiful and how to do some DIYs. Basically, I pretty much watched every single video that they have on their channel. And yeah, if you like interior design, check them out. I'll put the link in the description. You'll definitely enjoy them. Celine is asking, what is your favorite video that is made by you? To be honest, I think the last video that I made, the what I eat in a day for spring, I was just really happy with how it turned out and uh, all of the food that I showed in it was really delicious. I am super critical when it comes to my own work. I'm never 100% happy about my videos. I always feel like there is so much improvement that can be made. Um, you guys should know I'm not a professional when it comes to filming, when it comes to editing. I just kind of do it and hope for the best. So, yeah, but I really liked that video and I hope you did too. The next question is from a unicorn. My question is, how do you stay so positive with things like school and family issues? I find it hard to stay positive all the time. What are your tips? I guess I should mention first that I'm not positive all the time. I have my bad days, I have my good days, just like everyone else, but I definitely trained my mind to think more positively in the past few years. I mentioned it before that I used to struggle with depression a couple of years ago. I was in a very dark place. So it took some time to learn and to train myself to think positively and to focus on the good things in my life. A big part, I guess, of my positive attitude is my morning routine. Every single morning I spend about an hour and a half to two hours doing things that I love, doing things that make me happy, that make me feel at peace, and that includes uh, making a delicious breakfast, doing yoga, meditating, doing some self-care things such as oil pulling and using a neti pot. I also do a gratefulness prayer, which is basically saying things that you're grateful for. I used to use the five minute journal that Mimi and Alex created and basically it's a tool that helps you train your mind to be positive. Every single morning you would wake up and you would write down three things that you're grateful for. Uh, so I actually finished my journal and I should get another one but what I've been doing for the past couple of months I would just wake up and the first thing that I do is say three things that I'm grateful for out loud. For example, I could say I'm grateful for my parents' health, I'm grateful for my comfortable bed, I'm grateful for waking up and not having pimples on my face. So it could be as deep or as silly as you want, but that kind of sets the mood and your attitude for the entire day. And I personally found it really helpful. And again, my morning routine, it's something that I cherish so much. I don't check my phone, I don't check my social media, or emails during my morning routine because those things stress me out those things you know don't make me feel peaceful so i don't check them until i'm done my morning routine if i need to wake up at 5 a.m in order to make sure that i do have my morning routine before i can start working then i do that veda or vana i'm not sure how you say your name since you're russian what kind of food did you eat growing up i'm russian too and i'd like to compare growing up i ate a lot of meat a lot of bread uh, a lot of potatoes and mushrooms katliete we ate a lot of different soups borshi uh, the mushroom soup that I showed you recently. A lot of candy. My grandma used to give me a lot of candy when I was little. But yeah, just like I guess the typical Russian things. And for the holidays, we would make uh, the traditional Russian salads. Olivia, selotka pod shubay, mimosa. So yeah, that's what I used to eat. <laughs> Luisa says, say hello to Brazil. Hola, Brazil. My question is, how is your beauty routine, skin cleanse, hair treatment? Do you go for natural or homemade products? So I pretty much switched all of my makeup, all of my skincare products to cruelty-free and natural products that I'm actually really happy about. I'm not a big DIYer when it comes to those things. I do use coconut oil for you know moisturizing my body and for oil pulling. I also use the oil cleansing method to remove my makeup and to cleanse my skin, to cleanse the pores. But that's probably 
it when it comes to the DIY aspect of it. But yeah, I do definitely use the natural products. Katy J says, how do you manage working and spending so much time preparing food? So I guess going back to my what I eat in day videos. So those videos are not very representative of my everyday life. I don't make breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. Some days I have leftovers, some days, you know, I meal prep, some days I have my mom's food. Um, so I guess that's why it will be more useful for you to see the vlog style, what I eat in day videos. But one of the things that definitely helps me is meal planning and meal prepping on the weekend. So every Sunday, what I like to do, I like to meal plan I plan out my meals for every single day of that week. I don't stick to them 100%, but it saves me so much time knowing exactly what I want to make that day. And based on my meal planning, I then go shopping and buy the ingredients that I need for that week. And then I do the meal prep. Um, I could either prepare a couple of dishes already, like I did in my what I eat in the day video, or for example, if I know that I will be using quinoa in a couple of recipes during that week, I could make a big pot of quinoa. I could pre-cut some vegetables, wash the lettuce and spinach. So things like that, they're little things, but they actually make a really big difference. So that's one of the tips that I can give you. Madeline asks, so when did you start cooking? Ooh, probably when I was five. Well, I try to attempt cooking when I was five. I always tried to help my grandparents uh, in the kitchen, but I guess I started cooking on my own when I was probably 11 or 12. The next question is from Sayak and they ask, what inspired you to be a cook? I think definitely my grandmas. They used to be amazing cooks and I just grew up watching them make this delicious food and uh, I always wanted to be like them. Redefining Beauty asks, how old are you? Are you married or do you have any kids? If not, when are you planning to start a family? I'm 27. I am not married. I do have a boyfriend whom I love and we do not have any kids. I hope we get married sometime soon and start having kids because I really want a big family. So I need to get on that. <laughs> Yaya Drew asks, how do you stay motivated to eat healthy? Did you go to college? If so, what was your major? Do you meal prep? Workout? I guess what keeps me motivated to eat healthy is thinking back about the time when I wasn't eating healthy and how sick I felt physically, emotionally, mentally, how depressed I felt and uh, thinking about the work and the effort that I've done to get to this point and to feel this good. Also, like I said, I do want to have a big family. So I ho I'm hoping to be a mother at some point. And so I will be carrying a few kids inside of me. You know, you know, I think I will be a crazy mom, but I do want my body to be as healthy as possible to be able to give birth to really beautiful, healthy kids. So that's another motivation for me. I did go to college. I went to university and my major was accounting I do meal prep sometimes on Sundays and yes I work out about four to six times a week the next question is from Ripka and they ask uh, does being Russian influence how you cook and what you eat I think absolutely I think I love cooking so much because I'm Russian growing up all of the women in my family would cook a lot and would enjoy cooking so I thought that was the norm so I always wanted to be like them uh, so that's why I've been loving cooking ever since I was little and when it comes to eating yeah I love potatoes I love mushrooms I love garlic so yeah of course it influences me and the last question is from a Balan. they ask do you have any unusual quirks uh, that we don't know about you uh, I don't know. I like to sleep with my socks on. Some people find it weird, but I like my feet to be warm and nice and comfortable. My boyfriend finds it weird. Also, I think I like sneezing very loudly when no one else is around. When someone is around, you know, my sneezes are very tiny. I'm like, but when no one is around, I go at it. I'm like, ah! 
yeah so i guess that's something that i do so this was the last question that i'm going to answer today i had fun i hope that you did as well uh again my next time for tea video will be about my diet and veganism so if you want to ask me questions about that leave them in the comment section down below and if you have more questions that are not related to my diet you can also leave them down below and i will answer them in the future videos please include the hashtag of time for tea so i can easily find them also if you have any tea recommendations also please let me know in the comments what else do i want to say i want to say that i love you and i will see you in my next video bye quirks 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 i don't know how to say it quirks quirks like what quirks 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 quirks